Thanks for joining us for today's message. If you'd like to support this resource and others like it, you can do so by visiting our website, thechapel.cc, and select the giving option that works best for you. Enjoy the message. In the last week or several weeks or a month ago, you and I have made decisions that as soon as we make them, we go, you know what? This looks like really, this looks good. This is looking really good. I'm glad I chose to blank. I'm glad that I, da, 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 I'm glad that I. And then as time goes on, you realize, wow, okay, that was dumb. We have all made some crazy, uh, what I like to call just uh, dumb decisions. And then the last couple of weeks, we started this last week, we, start talk, we started talking about, we all want to make wise decisions, right? We all, that's good, okay, all right, all right, that's encouraging, all right. We all want to make wise decisions, whether it's professionally, whether it's spiritually, whether it's relationally, with our family, our friends, with, with where we go, where we don't go, what we buy, what we don't buy, who we love, who we don't love, whatever it is. We want to make wise decisions. We want to make wise decisions for the things that matter most, but I would argue we really want to make wise decisions, period, in everything. We're going to make mistakes. That's kind of the thing that makes us human, that makes us creation, that needs a God. Can I get an amen right there? Yeah. But we don't want to make the same mistakes, right? Let's make some new mistakes. (laughs) Let's make some new ones. They're like the old ones. I feel kind of, you know, dumb if I keep making the same mistakes. Last week, we started a journey, and we used this as our focus scripture, saying that wisdom is supreme, because this is what the Bible says. Wisdom is supreme. It's supreme. It's, it's on the top. It's very important. It's not like, would you like to supersize that value meal one? I don't know. I don't know. I don't really want the big fries, but the big Coke... I don't know. No, it doesn't say, listen, it's arbitrary. It says, no, get it. Wisdom is so important and supreme, therefore you got to go get it. And that's what we started last week, going to get wisdom because we all want to make wiser choices. It says, though it may cost you something. I think what we realize is uh, anything worth having costs us something. And, And so even though it may cost you something, go get it because you'll find understanding. And what we discovered last week on a journey to making wiser decisions, on a journey to make wiser decisions, we said it wasn't about being perfect, we said it was about being wiser, to be making wise decisions. The first thing is, wisdom comes first, understanding comes second. Culture says understand something and you'll become smart. The Bible says use wisdom and you'll gain more understanding. It's countercultural. That's why the series so far has been a little difficult because it is somewhat counterintuitive to the way culture is swinging. I don't want to do anything unless I totally understand it. Well, then it's really hard to apply faith, but meanwhile, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God because if you have everything figured out, then you become your God and you don't need a God. Okay, that didn't go over too well. All right, come on, guys, help me. That's why this series is difficult. Because a lot of times, and this is what I found talking to to people in our church, everybody wants to make wise decisions. Who sets out in the morning going, man, I would love to make the stupidest decision today possible? Who does that? Nobody. I think we all, whether we say it verbally or not, there's this thing inside of us that we want to do the right thing. We want to make wise decisions on things in our life. But there's something that prevents us from doing that. And we discovered step one last week towards making wise decisions was understanding that the beginning of wisdom for the believer and follower of Christ was understanding that it's the fear of the Lord, not Halloween fear, but fear. There's this reverence, this awe that he's God, that he's right, that he's God God and I'm actually not. That was the beginning of learning, taking a step towards making wiser decisions that, you know, I mean, he's God. And that there's this reverence and this awe about his greatness, that regardless of what I see, great is his faithfulness. Everything I need comes from you. Everything I have comes from you. You're a good God. It's this, the beginning of wisdom starts there. 
But today we take the second step towards wisdom. And it is an unlikely step because I think one of the things that prevents us from being wise, one of the things that prevents us from making wise decisions is what we're going to cover today. And I think we miss it because it's happening so subtle in our lives. I'm a believer because I've talked to a lot of you and I know what my heart is saying, oh, I just, I want to make the wisest decision. But sometimes I forget that he's God and I think that, that I'm right. And, and then the second thing we cover today, here we go. The Bible says this, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, Jesus speaking, the gospel of Matthew, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into what? Practice. So I hear what God says and I put it into practice. Wisdom is not the accumulation of facts or knowledge. It's not how many preachers you listen to. It's not how many books you read. It's what you know put into everyday life that builds your faith. Jesus says, listen, everyone who hears these words of mine and kind of sits back and just gathers. No. Jesus says the wise person is the one who hears what I say and puts it into practice. It's, it's a wise person. They hear the words of mine. They put it into practice. He's like a wise man who builds his house where? On the rock. It doesn't build it on things that when stuff happens to us or around us, how we remain steady and solid and consistent is because we took the words and we became wise because we applied them. What happens is, Jesus is saying, like, if you want to be steady, not perfect, but if you're going through a rough time and you don't want it to shake every single thing in your life, well, you, you've got to put my words into practice. It, it, those, those are the wise ones. It's not the accumulation of a bunch of information. It's actually putting it into practice. So the question becomes for you and I, where yesterday, where last week, did I put God's word into practice or did I apply just what I want? See, I knew that it was going to get quiet this weekend. So, so, according to Jesus, the one who is wise and whose life is solid and stable, not perfect, solid and stable, is the one that has taken my words and applied them. So where am I applying wisdom of God rather than my emotions or my feelings? Because that's the question. Because I think we would all agree we all want to make wise decisions, regardless of what the category is, with our kids, with our businesses, <laughs> with our loved ones. We want to make wise decisions. There is no reason for you, lady, to be in front of me. I was here first. There's no reason for you to be in front of me. You came last, but you skipped the line. It's 6.07 at a Starbucks in Atlanta. There is no reason for you to be skipping the line right now. I have to practice wisdom and shut my mouth <laughs> and not say anything. Don't ask me how I know that. It's just put into words. It's because what the Bible says is where there's an abundance of words, there is sin. It's a proverb. So where in our life do we apply wisdom so that we can be rock, solid, steady, consistent? It's a rock. It's not sand. It's not straw. It's not hay. Jesus says, no, it's, the, it's the wise guy. It's the wise guy. It's the, the person who's wise applies what he knows. I, I, we could say it like this. Wisdom requires action. Where are we applying it? Where are we, are we applying wisdom opposed to, uh, let's say, where are we applying wisdom opposed to uh, what we want? Because a lot of times being wise has nothing to do with what I want. A lot of times, what I want is to go, hey, good morning, get to the back of the line. That's what I want to say. Jesus hasn't kicked in yet. It's 6.07. Hi, good morning. You're behind me. Very nicely, just very nicely, good morning. Back there. Line starts there. That's what I want. 
But we found that wisdom begins with this awe and this reverence, knowing that God is right, that he is God and I am not. And we're beginning now taking our second step towards wisdom, understanding that wisdom requires me to act. It just doesn't require me to know. It requires me to act. And then you have this, uh, the Apostle Paul talking to the early church about wisdom. He says, so be careful how you live your life. Be careful who you bump into. Be careful how you treat others. Be careful how you live. Be careful how you love. Be careful what you post. Be careful what you read. Be careful what you expose you to. Just be careful how you live. Be careful how you live your life. Don't live like fools. Who gets up in the morning and goes, man, I'd love to be foolish by 12 o'clock. Right. What we learned last week is there were four kinds of people that practice wisdom. The simple, they just don't know, so they don't know what to do. The fool is a person that knows to do right, they just choose not to do it. Then there's the mocker who kind of belittles and makes fun of those who do better things than they do. And then there's the wise. Here Paul says, don't be the fool. Watch your life. Watch how you live. Don't live like fools, but live like wise people. Great. So there's the fool and the wise. Watch what he does. He says, make the most of every opportunity. Apparently, the differentiator between the fool and the wise, the wise person sees an opportunity and the fool misses it. The wise person sees an opportunity in their life to go, here is a place where I can apply some wisdom. Sometimes we just don't know. We don't know to apply it, and we're simple, the Bible says. Not in a belittling way. We just don't know. But the fool knows what to do. They just choose to go, hey, lady, get to the back of the line. But Paul says, be careful how you live. Not like the fool, but by the person who sees an opportunity to apply wisdom. They see this would be a great opportunity after my wife of almost 30 years says something that she knows is going to irritate me to high heavens. She knows I hate when she says this. Do I shut my mouth or do I just go, (laughs) what will I do? Will I apply wisdom or will I apply what I like to call Brooklyn. (laughs) What will I do? Right. So apparently the choice, the difference between the wise and the fool sees the opportunity to apply wisdom. The fool doesn't. The fool sees it as a way to express himself. The fool sees it as a different kind of opportunity. According to scripture, the difference between the fool And the person who lives wisely is they actually see this is a great opportunity for me to just shut my mouth and not say anything. Don't ask me how I know that either. (laughs) Yeah, apparently according to Paul, the wise live as though uh, they're controlled by something else. The wise live... Uh, Differently than the fool, definitely different than the simple, definitely different than the mocker. The wise live by something else. They see an opportunity. They see that it is time right here in this moment not to just be what I want. They see this time, this moment, they see this opportunity. Uh, I would argue that applying wisdom requires the right timing. Because the difference between the fool and the person who's wise is a person who sees an opportunity to apply it. It's timing. It's, it's, this, is ti- this is time right here. This is the time right here for me to really ask is, other people maybe, is this the wisest decision? I mean, after all, the proverb there's, does say that there is wisdom in the counsel of many. But we have a tendency, you and I, to want to be right so much that we become the smartest in the room. You ever meet those people who can't be told anything? You ever meet those people who can't be told anything? Like you tell them, listen, this is black. This is black. It's black, black piano case. Black piano, it's black. Black piano case. Black, it's black. Nice black, nice color black. That person goes, yeah, 
Maybe, but it's just not black. It's a flat finish of black that was created in 1984 by, you can't tell them anything. You can't, they know everything. They know more. Even when they agree, they have to let you know they know more. (laughs) What the Bible says is that is there a time? Is there a time? The wise person lives by timing. The wise person understands this is an opportunity to apply This is the right time. Okay, ready? What do we say? Lean in. Here we go. You want to know something I'm amazed at? One of the reasons why it's so hard for us to apply wisdom, it's not because we don't want to. It's not because we don't desire to. It's because something is happening to us that we don't even really know. We kind of know, but we don't. It's about finding the right timing. It's about finding the right opportunity. Live as the wise. The wise see the opportunity to apply wisdom. But everything is just moving. So you want to know the number one culprit? You want to know the number one culprit that prevents you and I from from applying wisdom? It's just not what you know. It's It's what you know and how you apply it. But not only applying it, knowing when to apply it, right? You want to know the number one culprit that keeps us from applying wisdom? Let's hear it. Right there. Right there. Let me, let me hear the same one again. Let me hear that again. Ooh, don't you just hear the angels in heaven? Don't you just hear the angels in heaven? Or, or maybe this sound, it sounds familiar to you. What's this other one? Oh, like that. When a lot of us hear that sound, the hair on our arms stand up. We're like, some of us, we hear that sound and we're like, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, you had a great day, honey? You lost your leg? Oh, that's okay. Hold on. It's all right. Okay. Hold on. I got it. Yeah, no, I got it. No, I got it. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Wait. Okay, yeah. Uh-huh. No, no way she said that, right? Hold on. It's work. Hold on. Hold on. You can hear that first one sound again. Listen to it. Listen. Oh, it's just so beautiful, isn't it? Hold on. Hold. No, really? It, when you hear that sound, it, it kind of fragments us. It kind of takes us away. It, 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 what does it do? It takes us from where we are and removes us to another place. We're actually not fully present. We're fragmented, right? Let me hear that third. Let me hear that third one. This is my favorite one right here. Oh, I love that. Hold on. It's Jesus. Hold on. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No, no, Jesus. No, 5,000 people. No, it's 5,000. He's got a lot on his mind. I was reminding him of a miracle. 5,000 loaves, fishes. No, babe, no. Really? The kids did what? Oh, he's such a kidder, isn't he? No, he's so great. No, no, no. What? What? A living room set? No, $4,000. No, buy it. Oh, it's cool. Hold on. It's work. No, buy it. No, get it. Get it. Oh, no. no payments till 2097. Buy it. No, no, no. Get it, baby. Get it. No, I love you. No, I love you. I missed you. I missed you, too. Hold on. So anyway, I was just, what happens is what's happening to us in so subtle ways is culture is moving so quickly that everything is becoming fast. Everything is teaching us or molding us or shaping us to react. We no longer now have, I get a text. Let me hear that one sound again, the one that Jesus loves, the first one. It's just beautiful. There it is right there. It's that, it just, what it does is, is, is it just creates in us almost, I don't want to say this, I don't know if this is the right word, almost like an anxiety. Even if we don't reach for our phone, our mind has now said, oh, I, gotta, I wonder if that's, and I wonder if it's right there. I got to respond. What's happening is culture is causing us to immediately respond to everything. Culture is moving us. And watch me, I'm not putting it down. I'm just stating a fact. That's black. It's not right or wrong. It's just, it's amoral. It's just, it's just black. That is what's happening in our culture. It's just going at such a clip that it is teaching us inadvertently to, that everything requires my response right away. That everything we do is more reactionary than wise. That everything we, not every text message is worthy of my attention or worthy for me to be fragmented from where I am. 
Yet, when we hear these sounds, myself included, hold on. And we're living in a culture, I'll make this statement. What we should always do as believers and followers when we read the word of God it is to see how different it is than the pace of culture. Always. Honor your body, for it is the temple of the Holy Spirit in every way. Yet, we denigrate women's bodies and men's bodies, and we prop them up as symbols of health when in reality we're just exploiting sexualism. See that it's this holy place, that it's this holy thing, that it's not common. When you read the word, see how it flies in the face of culture. Because Christianity was never meant to be a subculture, it was always meant to change the culture. And it will always flow in the opposite way of the way culture is going. I don't care if you're talking about sexuality or text messages. I text all the time. I get a lot of texts. I return a lot of texts. But it's just, it's just, it's just a black case. What's happening is culture is causing us to move so quickly, we're reacting. There is, there, listen to me, there's no time our timing is off to apply wisdom because there's no margin. We have to make a decision like this. Everything, everything, everything. And we squeeze and push out wisdom for the sake of reacting. I mean, we know this biblically, right? There's a man named Joseph. Joseph is given this dream by God. And he's so pumped. He's so excited. I got to tell everybody. I got to tell everybody about my dream. This is unbelievable. It's a wonderful dream. I want everyone to see and hear my dream. Here's the dream. Joseph says this to his brothers who hate him, by the way, okay? He says this. Listen to my dream, bro. He said, we were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundle stood up. And your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before my bundles. How great is that? that a fantastic dream. Look at that. His brothers responded, so you think you will be our king, do you? So you're going to think you're going to rule over us? So you think you're going to be our king? Do you actually think you will reign over us? Listen, Joseph, nobody's getting what you're saying. <laughs> Nobody, the brothers are like, what? But Joseph is so excited that he's been given a dream by God. I got to tell everybody. I got to let everybody know. I got to let, listen, I'm going to be king. This is going to be awesome. Everybody's going to bow down to me. This is going to be great. He can't control him. He can't use wisdom. He's got to react. We often in this story talk about Joseph's brothers who treated him unfairly, and that is true. But did Joseph exercise any level of restraint? No, nope, I feel it, I gotta tell it. I feel it, I gotta do it. It's my soulmate. They're my soulmate. I stalked them on Instagram. They're my soulmate. They bought the same shoes I did in the same day, on the same day. I said, I'm in love. I'm in love. I got to tell everybody. Got to tell everybody. It's because there's no, Joseph says, I got to. And then what's amazing to me is clearly you can see his brothers are not happy about this dream. <laughs> clearly you can see that his brothers are not jumping up and down. Oh, Joseph, it's going to be so wonderful that you, the youngest brother, serve, that we serve you and you be a king. How excited. I knew you were a king. You had it in your little bra. It was awesome. Nobody's doing that. Nobody's excited about that. But Joseph, because he's so excited and he's got to get it out. He's got to tell everybody. He's got to react. He doesn't even see that his decisions bore no fruit. He didn't even see that his decision to, maybe, ooh, maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I shouldn't have said that because it's not going over the way I thought. 
He doesn't see that. How do you know? He tells them another dream. He says, and they hated, the brothers hated him all more because of his dreams. And then Joseph doesn't even get it. He says this, Joseph had another dream and again told his brothers, Joseph, you're making the same mistake. He says, I told him another dream. Listen, I've had another dream. He said, the sun, the moon, and 11 stars, which represented Joseph's family, bowed low before me. Isn't that exciting? The story goes on to say they tied him up and threw him in a well. <laughs> right. Yeah. We say this a lot at the chapel. The, the, the Bible, the 66 canonized books are perfect. You don't need to add anything to it. You don't need to take anything away from it. It is actually perfect the way it is. And in this culture, that's very difficult to imagine or wrap our heads around. But we do it here. What you don't find is Joseph going, Ugh, man, it feels like a really spiritual dream. But let me go ask somebody who's had some experience with dreams. You don't see that there. You, you, what you do see is, is a bad reaction, but Joseph doesn't even get it. He's got to tell him another one. What you don't see is Joseph saying, hey, let me just go ask somebody who has like a gift in interpreting dreams, like, hey, help me out. I think this dream is of God, but 11.30 last night, I had to have the fourth meal, and it was a burrito. So is it the burrito or is it God? <laughs> right, right. You don't see Joseph asking for anything. What you see and what you find is Joseph reacting, not being able to have time or a moment to apply wisdom. What you find is that Joseph is so excited Joseph is so enthused, he's got to tell everybody that, that he just reacts. See, because I believe you and I want to make better decisions. I believe that you and I want to practice wisdom, but a lot of times we just get swept up into a current that is moving so fast that we have no margin. We have no space. We have ready, there's no pause. There's no pause to apply wisdom. We're just used to reacting. Because that's the way. It's not that we don't want, it's not that we're evil people. It's not sometimes that we don't know. The Bible says it's okay if you don't know. You're simple, not in a denigrating way. You're just simple, you don't know, so you have to learn. But the fool, the fool knows. I don't even believe that we're really, really foolish people. I believe that it's just that we react more because we're swept up into the current of culture and there's no pause. I would say sometimes this is what happens. But he who is impulsive exalts folly. Oh, I got to tell him right now. I got to tell him right now what I think. Oh, I got to tell him right now. I'm going to tell. And there's no, there's no pause. There's, there's no pause for wisdom to be practiced because we're too busy reacting. Maybe not because we're evil people. Some of us are evil. Let's just face that, okay? <laughs> but, but I think it's just, it's, it's just everything's moving. And, and trust me, I love fast. I love fast, man. It bothers me so much when something should take five minutes and, it doesn't t and then it takes 20, right? Is that just me? Is that why I take the little yellow pill? Or is it just me or is it you? Something's supposed to take five minutes and it winds up taking 20. Do you not lose your mind? And if you don't and you're good, trust me, you're too holy for us. Go to the Baptist church down the road. Listen, I love fast. I think it's great. The problem, and we've wrestled with this before, fast can be great. The bad thing about fast is when it makes slow look bad. Some things were meant to pause. Some things, Joseph, wait a second, let's maybe apply a little bit of wisdom to like what you're feeling. Joseph, no, no, I'm sure it was God, but hold, maybe there's a way you say it. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's a better time with how you say it. No, he's just got to tell everybody. It's because impulsive. Being impulsive is it exalt, exalts folly. 
the, 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 actually, the word their folly means not sound decisions. When we are rushed into things, and sometimes we have to make a reactionary call, and that's where we practice faith in what we know already. But a lot of times, not every, every text message has to take me away from where I am. That can wait. Because according to Scripture, uh, it's just not accumulating knowledge, it's applying it. it being impulsive, <laughs> driven, driven by a pulse, impulsive, in the pulse, in the moment, in the living, in the beat of it. That's impulsive. Uh, we, we create not sound living, according to a proverb. And a proverb is, is something, it's actually called a truism, something that's true about life. The book of Proverbs written by King Solomon, the wisest man alive. Wisdom is not knowledge. It's applying what we know at the right time. And sometimes we don't apply wisdom at the right time because we run so fast, we react more. I, I, I could say often the wisest thing to do is wait. Often the wisest thing is to, woo, hold on, I know you're excited. And we're going to tell your brothers and family, but let's, let's talk about this. Let's pray about this. Let's seek God about this. Let's seek wiser people than, than who you or me or we are. Let's, yeah, the wisest thing sometimes to do is wait. I think that's what happens a lot of times with wisdom because it needs margin, it needs space to it, it needs a pause. See, I, I could say this, that pausing rather than reacting allows what? Us to use wisdom. But if we're swept up in a culture where everything has got to be immediate and done fast, we miss wisdom because we're moving so fast. I'm going to give you something from uh, my life that maybe you can apply to your life, and it comes from hard-learned lessons about uh, wisdom. It comes from Scripture, thank God, <laughs> but it was this thing in life that I had to learn called delayed gratification. It's delayed gratification. It's delaying what I want, pausing to use wisdom, it's delaying, I'm going to tell you just what I think right now. Let me tell you, you don't, no, 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 delay a second. Delay a second. It doesn't mean you don't tell somebody off. What? Pastor Q, what? <laughs> yes. You can actually tell somebody off and put them in their right place by using godliness, by using godly words. You can still put people in their place. You can still tell them what you think. But by using, I mean, did Jesus not do it to the Pharisees? You brood of vipers. You brood of vipers, you serpent, you lowest thing on the ground that slithers. That's what he calls them. But he did it at the right time, at, in the right tone, in the right moment. Yeah, so, so what happens is delaying gratification. It was something I had to learn sexually. Delayed gratification. I want her. She looks great. She's wonderful. But I had to learn to delay what I wanted to pause to use wisdom. I didn't grow up thinking. I, I, I grew up thinking that the ultimate expression of love was sexuality. When really, biblically, the ultimate expression of love is servanthood. Cricket, cricket, I knew it was gonna get quiet there. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, so when you grow up like that, you have to learn if you really want to apply wisdom and you really want to be who God created you to be. It takes time, by the way. You, you, you have to delay gratifying so you're paused so you choose what is wise. You have to delay what I want to tell them off right now. I want to post that right now. I want to send them that picture right now. I want to do, right, I have to delay what I want so there's a pause, so I have time to choose wisdom. It's very difficult when you live by your senses and not live by the Spirit. It's very different. It's very difficult. But it's what I like to call the art of delayed gratification. It's an art. It's an art to recognize what you really want. I want to be in love. I want to be loved so bad. 
I want to be loved. I just want them to accept me for who I am. I just want them to see me without makeup and love me. I just want, I just want my wife to love me regardless of how big my beer gut is. <laughs> regardless, you should love me as I am. The appetite for that becomes so insatiable that we actually lower our standards to get what we want. So what happens is we have to delay what we want, so we choose what is wise. Um, how can I say it? I'll say it because I'm feeling spunky. Some of us are dating people because the appetite to be loved and to be accepted is greater than practicing wisdom when wisdom says, do not unequally yoke with those who do not believe like you do. Wow, See, we, because the appetite, because it's delayed gratification, it's, it's delay it. Oh I, oh, I can go buy the couch right now. Oh, I can go buy the couch right now. $3,000 leather, double recliner. Oh, I saw it. My kids are graduated. My kids are married. We paid off college. We did it all. We rich right now. I'm just telling you. I'm just saying. Two weddings. Okay, well, you out. You out. I keep taking stuff over to their houses. Like, this is yours. They're like, what is that? Oh, it's yours. It's yours. I find them boxes and boxes in the garage. It's yours. I got, we got so much money right now, my wife and I. It's crazy. Yeah. Now, I can do it. But then I have to begin to think, well, I, I, I can get it, but have I, have I really made a difference with what God has given me to move the kingdom forward just in our church? Have I done that enough? Have I prayed it enough? Pause. Delay gratification, not that I won't get it, but is now the right time? Is this the opportunity to practice wisdom? It, it, it's plaguing us like crazy. Just because we can doesn't mean we should, and we're going to hear it all the way through the whole series. It's just the art of delayed gratification, whether it's wanting to tell someone off, whether it's wanting to post some, something, whether it's wanting to give myself to someone, the art of delayed gratification. It's practicing this so that there's a pause and we don't react, so that there's a pause so we can choose what's wise. We had uh, uh, three months ago, four months ago, we had, we had someone come to us because we're looking for our south location, um, south of town. Very difficult. We had someone say, hey, listen, I got a building. Uh, here it is. Blah, blah, blah. It was a great deal. We walked around. I went down there. With, with Some of our elders went down there. With some of our staff looked around. It was great, this and that. And, it's the best, best financial deal you could have asked for us. It was unbelievable. It was amazing. I was like, what? God, you're so good. You're so good. God goes, look, but I need an answer by the end of the month. We had six days. Bye-bye. Didn't give us time to do enough due diligence. Didn't give us enough time to cross our T's and dot our I's. Didn't give us enough time to seek wisdom. Two and a half months later, Duke Energy reclaimed some property on that same thing and there were 175 less parking spots. Wow. Why? Why? Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. Good. Delay what I want because the wise person applies what they know. But a lot of times we don't get to apply what we know because we're feeling rushed and there because everything's fast, everything's moving, everything's going. But in reality, it's the genius is in the pause. The genius is in the pause. Pausing allows me to choose wisdom. When I'm feeling rushed or against it, I, so what I do is I delay what I want, which creates a little bit of time, which creates a little bit of a pause for me to interject wisdom. I think you want, I think I want, I think we all want to make wiser decisions. A first step towards wisdom is knowing that he is God. 
that he's right. That there's this awe, there's this reverence for him. The second step is understanding that I don't need to react sometimes. I just need to pause for a moment. Delay what I want so I create margin to use wisdom. And listen, we already, people already asked me after sure, well, well, I've been thrown into a situation I have to by Thursday. Some of us are put in situations where we got to give answers right now. And really what that is, is a gigantic opportunity to apply that your steps are already designed and made of by the Lord and he is with you and practice faith. But in most cases, delay the gratification, whatever it is, create the space and the margin for us to practice wisdom. I don't want to be thrown into a well like Joseph. I want people to rejoice over the things that the Lord is showing us. As your pastor, I want us to make the wisest decisions. Amen? Bow your heads, I'm gonna pray for you. Thank you, Lord, so much. Thank you, Lord, that we get to hear your voice through your word. This week, Lord, let us not be pushed, let us not be rushed. Lord, this week, teach us to pause, to delay what we want, so we can use wisdom, so we can choose what's wise, so we can choose what's best and wise for who you made us to be and what you want to do in and through us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen.